good morning once again. And it's indeed a pleasure and an honor um, to host Shalini Rajneesh here with us today. The things that we've done in the state of Karnataka and the way we've kind of envisioned about what needs to happen in the future, a lot is actually dependent upon how we are thinking of trying to make things simpler, how we are trying to think, make things more agile and future ready. Because whatever we bring across at the ground level tomorrow shouldn't be a here and now solution, but building across things for the future. In that context, actually, three things which have taken a lot of prominence is going across in the way of paperless, faceless, and touchless, in the way we are seeing technology emerge. Just wanted to hear from you, ma'am, how you are seeing these things coming by and how we should be thinking about taking this in future. Thanks, Irina. Let me first congratulate Microsoft India and ELETS for holding this uh, very, very important future-ready uh, workshop. And I'm very happy to see that all my colleagues from Government of Karnataka who are leaders in their own right in bringing in transformational uh, changes with use of IT are all here to share their best practices not only with this audience, but across the world. As you've already mentioned, we have to be future ready, and uh, there's no true opinion about the technology being uh, the, the ride for us, otherwise, without which it is just not possible to think about. Uh, we all know that we've just celebrated our uh, 75th year of independence, the Amrut Mahotsava, and Honorable Prime Minister has given a call that the next 25 years, when India will be 100 years old at 2047, we have to be future ready. And these 25 years are going to be Amrut Kal. So in that Amrut Kal, how uh, prepared we are, how clear we are about our visions uh, is what uh, would be the, the deliberations and the outcomes of uh, interactions like this. Three important things I feel are very important for uh, future readiness. One, people. Two, planet. Three, productivity. The three Ps, as we normally say in MBA. We need to have the maximum growth and productivity of our people, of our uh, environment, but it should not be at the cost of environment. So while we want every inch of land to be productive. We want every cubic centimeter of the air we breathe to be clean. Every gallon of water in our oceans to be pollution free. Every person in, on planet to be productive. We must also ensure that we are, whatever we are doing, we are doing it with a sense of responsibility towards our planet. So with that, I would be very happy. I, do, I don't think I really have to elaborate on the kind of IT initiatives and innovations that have been pioneered by the Karnataka state. Uh, to name a few, you have Bhumi, you have Sakala, you have Avalokana, you have Akanksha, you have Kutumba, and so on and so forth, any number of initiatives. And it makes me very proud to say that uh, the IT initiatives take place in Karnataka and then get scaled up across India. So it is in the fitness of things that we make more innovations, more IT initiatives in this IT and startup capital of the country, and we make the country future ready. Thank you. Thank you. That was such a lovely answer, and I really loved the three Ps, uh, people, planet, and productivity. Because what more than sustainability is taking everybody's attention right now, because we owe that responsibility to not just what we are doing right now, but to the generations of the future. Um, and I love the fact that you recalled the, the way Karnataka is pioneering and taking things in bo big, bold strides and taking large missions there. In the context of that, when you think about using technology and taking things to the next level, we are interacting through citizen services and there's a lot of citizen data that we are getting, acquiring 
and we, we are generating insights. How do you think of taking these insights, serving the citizens better and taking things to the next level? I think that integrative part is, is right now missing. We have islands of excellence, but we've not tried to get the synergies out of integration. And that's what my department, uh, planning department under the leadership of Honorable Chief Minister is trying to do. We are coming up with a concept called data lake wherein we are trying to take the databases of all departments. E-governance has already uh, created a platform called Karnataka Open Data Initiative, where all the public data is integrated uh, and, and made available for public uh, utilization. We have uh, now gone a, a step further. So we've, we've tried to, we, we've got a, an uh, MOU with uh, Triple IT Bangalore, wherein we are trying to now make sense of that data. We are trying to monetize that data. We are trying to make it more application oriented. And we are also trying to make it more management friendly because I don't want to fritter away my resources or energy on everybody. I must know where I must attack, isn't it? So those strategic areas of con intervention which are required, for example, I have 13% poverty in my state. Now, I don't need to do anti-poverty programs in the rest of the 70, 87. I have to focus where these 13% are. And how do I locate where these 13% are? Because poverty is multidimensional. A person who doesn't have house is also poor. A person who is not literate is poor. I, a person who has not uh, got any employment is poor. So how do I identify where these uh, poor are so that I map it with the schemes that are required for them? And then within no time, I make the difference. S this is this data lake and the big data analytics using AI tools and other tools uh, and using the convergence of all the department schemes, budgets, is what the planning department is, uh, is already in the process. And that, I think, is the way forward to a sustainable growth. Totally. And I resonate so much with the way you talked about data and in context of that. AI related way that you can think about predictive things that you want to do in the future. That actually brings a lot of responsibility also on us because the data that is lying with us, the privacy of it, because privacy is a human right, we have to protect that, the security of the data, and how we are use, using the data in a cross-functional manner so that whatever is coming from one source, we are able to actually service another source in a very, very homogeneous two-way manner. One of the examples that we have is in the healthcare segment, where uh, Apollo Healthcare actually is using the AI scores towards predictive cardiovascular overall agility, uh, uh, overall health of a person by looking at their age profile, their health profile, and various other parameters. So sitting here, you might not have known things, but now you'll be knowing as to what might be coming to you in the future and be better prepared for that. Very true. I think privacy is uh, one very, very a uh, critical thing that many times is lost sight of, despite all the act in place, uh, you know, the regulations, rules are in place. I don't know, I'm sure all of you have experienced morning till evening, you'll get calls. You want, oh, your daughter is in 12th standard, we've got the tutorials. <laughs> you want to buy this hair fall thing, we have some product. The, the phone numbers or the email IDs that we share at you know, various online platforms or even shops and all that I, is being misused with all uh, due apologies. It should not happen. So we are very uh, clear that while securing the privacy of uh, the individual, we are looking at, uh, as I said, monetizing, making the data available in a way where startups and entrepreneurs and innovators can take a leap. One small example, we've got fruits um, software uh, database uh, integrating all the uh, agriculture, horticulture, sericulture, all the productivity things on land uh, and linked to each farmer available through the e-governance department. Now, an entrepreneur would be interested to know, all right, I have how much uh, mango production in uh, state of uh, Karnataka, how much of it is exported, how much of it is uh, actually wasted away because you don't have cold storages enough in that locality for that farmer to utilize. You know of instances 
uh, with uh, tons and tons of onions and uh, tomatoes being thrown away on, on the road because they don't get the right price. So the, where is the gap? The gap is that I have to agro process all that marketable surplus. So I am now making it available through my Karnataka at a glance uh, portal as to correlating the data for the purpose of entrepreneurship, for the purpose of innovation, and making business sense out of it without touching whose data it is. Yeah? So I, can, I provide on this platform as to where I don't have cold storages, but I have huge quantum of onion or uh, uh, potato or um, uh, tomato uh, being grown. I also provide data of uh, the, uh, there are about 48 li lakh um, enterprises, the economic enterprises as per the economic census uh, in Karnataka, starting from one woman or one man enterprise within the house to uh, uh, MNC in the, over here. Now, they, all we know is that beyond Bangalore, there is no growth, right? So those who are in, uh, interested, whether social entrepreneurs or IT entrepreneurs or startups, we have to take those services, those uh, uh, industry-related or uh, entrepreneurship-related thing beyond Bangalore. Then only that, again, I said, the in inclusivity part of it, the sustainability, my 13% of poor, my missing link in the productivity has to be um, focused and um, intervened and, and supported then all of us are ready. Otherwise, we'll be 80% ready or 20% uh, not ready. Very, very inspiring stories. And one of the problems that we uh, all talk about is that if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. I think the 13% and the inclusivity is what is the real service that we can bring together. Um, the last question I want to ask you is that there's a lot of things that we want to do towards ensuring that the transformation is happening and we are kind of taking a lot of leaps towards what is required for the economy, for the government, for the citizens, etc. Where do you think technology can play a role towards debottling any of the obstacles, challenges, etc. which are coming? Technology is indispensable for debottling <laughs> the obstructions. For example, Sakala. Um, for a common man or woman, what is government? What are these public services? You, you, it's a big myth. It's a big uh, riddle. Now, because of the technology interventions that have been provided, now it's at, a, at, at the click of your hand, actually, not even mouse. So you know uh, by, there is a call center, for example. You don't have to be even technology friendly or IT, IT uh, knowledgeable. You just call up the call center number double four double five, uh, double four double five, and say, "Okay, in I need a driving license, I need a birth certificate, I need whatever," and then uh, the call center does the back end job for you, and then brings it back to you. They've got the Jan Sevak scheme, for example, at the door delivery. It is there with the post offices department. We've got uh, now a, a new initiative where birth and death, death certificates will be door delivered. Now, if Amazon could have delivered everything to you at the door, why not government services? I think one of the major transformations in governance should be that people need not come to the offices. The offices should serve the, um, the, the public service to their doorsteps or wherever they are. The convenience of the citizen uh, has to happen, and I'm very happy to share at this uh, juncture, a very new and uh, bold initiative taken by our Honorable Chief Minister by announcing the setting up of uh, State Institute for Transformation of Karnataka on the lines of NITI, National Institute of Transformation of India. So let's look forward to uh, this SITK, as we call it briefly, uh, to, to transform at least you know, Karnataka and then, as usual, show the way to the rest of the country and the globe. These are absolutely pioneering initiatives. Thank you so much, Dr. Shalini Rajneesh. It was a pleasure hearing from you on all the initiatives. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, and we look forward to uh, a sustainable collaboration with you. Microsoft is a leader, and uh, without, without you, uh, no IT initiative can be really successful, I mean, if I may say so. So we would like you to help us in the inclusive development of our society with IT applications and innovation. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, ladies, for this wonderful insights. And may I request Ms. Irina Ghosh to please present a small token of appreciation from our end for ma'am's presence here and enlightening us with the various initiatives being undertaken in Karnataka. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a pleasure listening to you. Can we have a round of applause, please, for Dr. Shalini Rajneesh? Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us.